Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Rating the News. My name is Vanessa Otero and my company creates the media bias chart. Uh, the company is called Ad Fontes Media. We rate news sources for reliability and bias. We rate news sources and news-like sources. Today, I'm going to be going over uh, articles and rating articles like we rate them at Ad Fontes Media, just like our analysts do, uh, for one of our topics of the week. And this week's topic of the week is, uh, we call it Mouse Pants. Minnie Mouse's pants suit. There are news articles, news and news like articles about, about this topic. And it's an interesting one because we see this genre sort of a lot over uh, you know, partisan media, especially. And we'll get in, into that in a, in a bit. But what I'm going to do today is go through uh, some articles from a uh, center left and right uh, with varying degrees of reliability, uh, varying types of content, and just discuss how we go about rating these articles as analysts at Ad Fontes Media. And I'm going to make references to our methodology. You'll see me actually uh, use our interface or our backend interface system to rate news articles. And I'll talk about different sub factors that we use, uh, things that we use like uh, the headline and graphic and uh, expression, veracity. Uh, for bias, we'll look at things like political position and language. And I'm just going to point these things out, but I'm not going to spend this whole time like teaching about our methodology. I'm just really going to dive into the subject of the articles themselves. But if you do want to uh, learn our full methodology, we do have that available both for individuals, you know, just folks that are uh, just want to become better news consumers. We have that as a membership option. And if you're a teacher or you're in school um, in, and you want to do this as part of an educational curriculum, we have our uh, news literacy curriculum for that as well. Just head to our website at adfontesmedia.com. But let's jump into mouse pants. Um, I'm going to bring up our first article. And this, um, what I'm going to show you right now is our analyst interface. So if you haven't seen this before, uh, this is a blank media bias chart that our analysts use uh, and have articles in there. It says, it, you see here at the title at the top says, Minnie Mouse to wear pantsuit for first time in history for Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary. Uh, and if, when you pop that out, that's actually this article over here. And it's from People Magazine. So, you know, this is interesting. Like, why is Minnie Mouse's pantsuit in the news at all? Let's read about the story and then we'll discuss, you know, this type of topic uh, in the news and how it functions in our current news landscape. So uh, Minnie Mouse to wear a pantsuit for a first time in history for Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary. That's a headline. It appears to be what the story is. So, so far for the headline, uh, that's one of the factors we rate. It seems pretty factual. It seems pretty straightforward. Like I, I feel like I know what to expect from the article from this headline. And uh, if that turns out to be the case after reading the headline, then the headline and graphic uh, the headline will get um, you know, a, high, a high score. And the graphic is, you know, we, we see said pantsuit, right? There on the left, you have um, a Minnie Mouse, uh, Minnie Mouse in uh, blue and black polka dot, and on the right, a more, her more traditional outfit, which is a dress. So the lead here, uh, this section we call the, the lead. Um, some people spell it L-E-D-E, -E, uh, others spell it L-E-A-D, but generally this is, you know, like a sort of like a, a, a sub headline. This new take on her signature polka dots makes Minnie Mouse a symbol of progress for a new generation, designer Stella McCartney said of the iconic character's new look. Okay, so, you know, this might remind you of some other recent stories of companies, brands, um, trying to, you know, make some steps towards inclusivity or progress uh, in line with, evolving cultural norms. Okay. Now, I think that's about as neutrally as I can, as I can say that. Um, other recent examples, uh, you know, Mars recently made some changes to their M&Ms, like uh, fictional, these are all fictional characters, right? All I'm going to talk about is fictional characters here, but uh, Mars has M&M characters that 
that have like arms and legs and shoes. So you know, they made changes to them, particularly the green M&M used to, um, you should be like the sexy M&M with, uh, like long legs and high heels. And now she wears more like sensible shoes. Uh, and there were articles written about that and, and why Mars made that kind of uh, change. There have been articles about Mr. Potato Head uh, and, and other fictional characters, um, articles about companies like uh, Lego uh, making changes to their packaging such that they're not uh, designed, they're not geared towards uh, boys or girls specifically, but they're more neutral and inclusive of, um, you know, like anybody can play with the toys because they're Legos, right? So a number of companies have made changes like this to their branding, their packaging, their characters, um, you know, particularly fictional characters. And this has become a uh, sort of a culture war flashpoint, as we'll see from other articles about this particular subject. So it might not seem like a big uh, story, but it is a story. It is a thing that's happening culturally. Like, is this, the, is this the most important news story um, of the day? You know, probably not, but it is, it's a thing that's happening that people find worthy of being informed about, right? So People Magazine, let's see what they have to say about this. Like, how can you report on this story how do they report on the story? How, how reliable is this? How opinionated? How, how biased is it? Let's take a look at the sentences. Minnie Mouse is getting a whole new look in honor of Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary celebration. Uh, straightforward has an exclamation uh, mark. So it's, uh, it seems generally like a positive statement about that, but factual, straightforward. The iconic Disney character, who is usually clad in a red and white polka dot dress and matching bow, will debut a very fashion forward, modern day twist on her signature look while celebrating the park's uh, big milestone. All right, so uh, the iconic Disney character, that's an adjective, but it seems like a pretty accurate adjective, um, you know, not out of the ordinary, um, who is usually clad in a red and white polka dot dress and matching bow. That's a pure fact statement. So um, for expression, scores high uh, is a fact statement. For veracity, scores high uh, because it's true. Um, you know, that's easily verifiable. Will debut a very fashion forward modern day twist. Okay. So now we've got a little bit of characterization of um, the nature of this outfit. Fashion forward is positive. Modern day twist is positive. Not like overly positive, but you know, so far the tone of this article is like, this is a good thing. She's wearing, the, she's getting a new outfit, right? This is modern. This is, um, you know, fashion forward. Designed by Stella McCartney, uh, Mitney's new look will consist of blue trousers and matching a matching blazer adorned with black polka dots. And of course a matching bow. Um, and again, that's a, what kind of sentence is that? That's a fact statement. That's just what the news is. So you can't really say the news any more straightforwardly than that. So, so far we've got high points for expression, high points for veracity. And let me just jump back to our, uh, our ratings interface, right? These are the things I'm talking about. I talked about the headline. So high, high scores uh, for the headline, it's really matching what we expect. Uh, high scores for expression, because uh, we score things at the top that are, um, it, what we mean by expression is it is it fact reporting is it analysis um, is it opinion right so there's some fact reporting and a little bit of analysis that little bit of analysis comes in the form of the adjectives describing um, what you know what this is fashion forward um, a modern day twist right veracity uh, is uh, like truthfulness and uh, factuality right so uh, how true is are these statements? So far, no reason for us to doubt that there's anything untrue about these statements. So high score uh, for, uh, for veracity. So in general, this is you know, looking like a fact reporting article. Um, let's, uh, let's wait a little bit on bias. We don't see too much, um, I don't see too much bias here uh, other than like positivity. Um, so maybe you could, uh, in comparison to like, what, what's the cultural context, right? Like uh, a... Uh, a female character wearing pants instead of a dress, right? Going towards away from like uh, traditional uh, gender roles and stereotypes and you know clothing requirements into a like more modern, more progressive era. You could associate that, uh, and I think it would be appropriate to, with a more uh, left-leaning, like progressive type of um, feeling, right? 
So uh, we could nudge that over uh, for you know political uh, position or uh, comparison, just a little bit to the left, but it's just it's really not overt, right? It's uh, it really minimal in terms of like the positivity. So uh, what else do we have here? It says I'm delighted to be working with the one, the only, the iconic Minnie Mouse. McCartney fifty said in a statement, adding that Minnie had has always had a special place in my heart. Uh, and then she's, um, there are a few more quotes from Stella McCartney. Now, remember, when there are quotes in the article, we want to treat the, the quotes as the guest of the article. So think about the author as the host of the article. Um, they have the choice on whose quotes to include. And here they're including Stella McCartney's uh, quotes about Minnie Mouse. Now, we want to ask ourselves, why does the author include quotes and, and this, this particular person's quotes? And there are a couple of reasons why you'd want to include quotes. One reason is because you want to say that like what the person is saying is true. And the other reason is that you want to show that a person just said this because that's what the story is about. So here, the story is about like Minnie Mouse's pantsuit. Um, Stella McCartney designed it getting her input is basically the, the, the story, right? Figuring out like, you know, what, what she was thinking behind, um, behind designing this, right? So it's not inappropriate to include Stella McCartney's quotes. Uh, it actually seems quite fitting for this article. So what did she say? She says more positive things about Minnie Mouse. That's not really like a political thing. It's fictional character, right? She says, what I love about Minnie is the fact that she embodies happiness, self-expression, authenticity, and that she inspires people of all ages around the world. Plus she has such great style, right? Hard to see anything political there. Uh, I wanted Minnie to wear her very first pantsuit at Disneyland Paris. So I have designed one of my iconic costumes, a blue tuxedo using responsibly sourced fabrics, right? So, you know, obviously this, uh, this like her, um, this drawing, you know, is, is just, you know, a drawing, but Minnie Mouse is actually going to wear this at uh, Disneyland Paris. So um, she does want to make some kind of a statement, right? Uh, the statement is, uh, it's iconic. It's a blue tuxedo, you know, breaking, uh, there's a hint of like breaking down gender stereotypes and using responsibly sourced uh, fabrics. Uh, typically, you know, responsibly sourced fabrics. Um, the uh, There's echoes of like uh, conservation, uh, conservationism in there, um, fair trade. Uh, those are your know, principles, you know, associate that you could associate, um, with, you know, left-leaning, um, values. And then she concluded the, the rest of the quote said concluded the iconic designer, this new take on her signature polka dots makes Minnie Mouse a symbol of progress for a new generation. She will wear it in honor of Women's History Month in March 2022. I can't wait to see, uh, for you to see this new look at Walt Disney Studios Park. So this is, um, again, she touches on a symbol of progress for a new generation, uh, honor Women's History Month. So, you know, the themes of progress, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, left-leaning values, um, you know, described by Stella McCartney in this, uh, in this particular change that she's talking about with Minnie Mouse, right? So for portraying that in a positive light, we could push, you know, this, this topic selection uh, over just a little bit uh, to the left. So what do I mean by topic selection? All right, see this, uh, this factor called comparison? So comparison is a factor that we use to include uh, both topic select selection and omission, okay? So topic selection, picking something that's of more interest to uh, like a left-leaning or right-leaning audience can push uh, the comparison score over uh, to the left, right? So like, let, so let's talk about like why we've um, put these bias scores over a little bit to the left. So for uh, topic selection, we're talking positively about some left-leaning values, but it's not overt, right? It's just mildly favorable. So I wouldn't push this past like a minus six. I wouldn't push, push this into a skewed left, but I put just a tiny bit left of center. Um, for political position, um, you know, the position that, you know, um, progress and like, uh, breaking out of gender stereotypes isn't like a hardcore like left position. You know, a lot of folks who are sort of middle of the road uh, politically, or even like you know somewhat right leaning politically, think that you know 
having women be empowered to do new things uh, and make progress is generally like a good thing. So again, it's not something that we're going to push like all the way to the left, but just maybe a, a touch to the left. Okay. Let's look at the rest of the article. What do we say? All right. So the rest of this is, um, is basically more, uh, more fact statements, a little bit of context. So when we're analyzing uh, a news story and we're trying to figure out like how, how reliable it is, the uh, main things that we take into consideration are its expression, like whether it's expressed as fact analysis or opinion, um, and, and whether it's true, like veracity. So these are all mostly uh, fact statements and like saying that Mickey Mouse in a promo video, Mickey Mouse can be seen wearing this, and Minnie Mouse can be seen wearing that. Those are you know perfectly factual statements. Um, Disney is celebrating National Polka Dot Day, right? So notice that we're not making any judgments on the importance of this story necessarily, right? Because you know what's important to different people really varies a lot, right? This is obviously not a story about a hurricane or a tornado or uh, or something like that, which some people would consider important. But it is a thing um, that happened in the world, and you know we're not gonna we're not going to say that this is unimportant, and you know that doesn't really affect our our rating uh, for this article. It's reliable, um, it's factual, it's expressed uh, factually. It has minimal analysis, um, doesn't really have much opinion in there. Uh, and for bias, it just, um, you know, a little tiny, tiny bit to, to the left. All right. That's a story about the fictional character. That's about as straightforward as you can uh, can make it. So again, we've got People Magazine coming through with a really reliable, uh, minimally biased story. All right. How does this play out in the rest of the media landscape? Unfortunately, uh, we've seen this story and we've seen this genre over and over before. Um, this turns into, as I mentioned, a culture war flashpoint. I don't think it needs to, but it does. So let's explore how this gets this same story about Minnie Mouse's pants. Like, I know we said it's not important and we don't downrate it for that. But ultimately, the story is about Minnie Mouse's pants, right? This doesn't really affect your life. It doesn't really affect my life, right? Um, it's like, oh, there's a thing that Disney did to like, you know, indicate progress, okay? What does this look like on another article in, in here? On News Punch, Disney sparks outrage following woke Minnie Mouse makeover. Oh man, outrage. Now there's outrage over mouse pants. Um, this is this may not come as a surprise to you, right? We've seen outrage over Mr. Potato Head. We've seen outrage over the you know green M and M's changing. Like, let's explore this. Let's explore this outrage. All right, so let's look at this uh, news source. You might not be familiar with it. News Punch, where mainstream fears to tread. Okay, so uh, we're mainstream when. When news sources talk about the mainstream media um, in a derogatory sense, like main, mainstream media is afraid to tell you this, like they won't go here, et cetera. It's usually, again, derogatory and indicates bias. Like the left and the right both use uh, mainstream media as a derogatory term. Um, but let's see if we can identify where the, um, where the bias is here. All right, so we've got a picture. Again, this is a you know, pretty straightforward uh, picture. Uh, Minnie Mouse uh, old outfit, Minnie Mouse new outfit. So really don't need to make much of it there, but what's the headline? Disney sparks outrage, okay? If we compare this to the previous article, there was no um, allusions to outrage, right? That was not what the story was about. It was just about what happened. Um, and what is this outrage about supposedly? following woke Minnie Mouse makeover. Now, woke is a, a pretty big, easy clue these days in modern um, media landscape, you know, bias detection, okay? Usually woke is derogatory and used by people on the right to describe people on the left, okay? So woke used to be a term that folks on the left would uh, would use it positively to say um, that, you know, be being woke was like having your eyes open, like being awake to, to progress. Now it's become basically a, a cudgel, uh, a word to uh, make fun of folks on the left, almost exclusively 
simply by the right. All right. So Disney has come under fire after debuting a woke new look for, uh, for Minnie Mouse. The cartoon character has ditched her trademark red and white polka dot dress in favor of a quote progressive Hillary Clinton style blue pantsuit in honor of Disneyland uh, Paris's 30th anniversary. So that's just one sentence, but there is some implied bias uh, with just a couple of words here, right? So she ditched, ditched her trademark red and white. So ditched, I mean, slightly negative, not a big deal here, right? Uh, in favor of a progressive Hillary Clinton uh, style blue pantsuit, right? So without knowing more, um, you know, we could assume from the fact that um, they said that this caused outrage and it's woke. Those are, those are hints that it's going to be to the right, you know, uh, outrage on the right accusing the left of doing something woke and, you know, you know, too progressive and appropriate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they put the term progressive in, uh, in quotes, and then they reference Hillary Clinton. Now, usually when the right references Hillary Clinton, it's not in a positive manner, right? So we can assume that they uh, tended to like make a little jab by calling this a progressive Hillary Clinton uh, style blue pantsuit. Not like, oh, look, a pantsuit like Hillary. It's more like a progressive Hillary Clinton pantsuit. That's how I read this, that, this statement in view of the um, headline that we previously read, okay? So Minnie's look did not go down well with fans, with many people accusing the company of trying to be woke and calling her old outfit timeless, all right? So again, a third time we've mentioned woke, like not positive in this context and calling her old uh, outfit uh, timeless. So here you get some uh, mild allusions to um, you know, conservative values and principles. Like um, the old way was just fine. Like why would we want to change the, the thing? Like that's, uh, I mean, the literal definition of conservative is like, you know, um, not making too rapid of change because uh, of a lot of reasons, like, like the way it is, is okay. The way it is, is traditional. The way it is, is just fine. We like the old way. Right. Um, so it's just a, uh, it's a mild reference to conservative values, but it's an, a reference nonetheless. So here we, we have conservative commentator, Candace Owens even accused Walt Disney Company of putting its Minnie Mouse character in trousers to undermine societal values and distract Americans from failures by the Biden's administration. Wow. Okay. There, there's like a lot there that sort of like elevated the level of um, like, what is, you know, what does this whole pantsuit mean? Right. Um, they quote extensively, Candace Owens. Uh, Candace Owens is certainly a conservative commentator. She has a uh, YouTube shows. She, um, she's, you know, her, uh, and, and podcasts that we've rated on our, uh, media bias chart. Um, pretty much all of her content is like pretty far to the right. Okay. Like hyper-partisan, right. And, you know, she will make commentary about things like this. So, um, accusing, uh, the company of undermining societal values and distracting Americans from failures by the Biden administration, Biden's administration. So notice that like, um, this is a pretty, uh, this is pretty opinionated, like elevating the opinion of Candace Owens, which is her quote is the guest of the article. Right. And here it appears that, like the reason that they're including, uh, Candace Owens, uh, quotes is to say like, Candace Owens is right. There's outrage out there. Look at all these people that are mad because of the, uh, the things that Candace Owens is pointing out. Also, so when we, we see like a hyper-partisan, like this is already skewing into like hyper-partisan right, um, based on what we've read so far. When you see them also making uh, typos and mistakes, uh, those are indications that, you know, it's a, it's sort of just an outrage outlet and it's not real careful journalism. And so you'll see typos and grammatical errors, failures by the Biden's administration. It's, that's incorrect. It's the Biden administration, right? Uh, so those are reasons to rate down its reliability even further. In an interview with Fox News host Jesse Waters, Owen said, this is why people don't take these people seriously. Dot, 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 dot. Which is a grammatical error because an ellipse only requires three dots. 
They're taking all of these things that nobody was offended by and feel like they have to get rid of them and destroy them because they're bored. They're absolutely bored. They're trying to destroy the fabrics of our society, pretending that there are issues. I mean, this is a pretty serious uh, and opinionated charge about, again, mouse pants, right? So a company is trying to do a thing to say, you know, let's move forward. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not viewed as just saying like, you know, like what Stella McCartney said that she intended or what the Disney companies say they intend is, you know, progress, uh, women's history month, um, you know, iconic new style, just, just temporary. Right. Um, they like this commentator is turning it into a culture war that vilifies the other side. So, he, um, here, he, here is here are the indications that there is vilif uh, vilification of the other side. This is why people don't take these people seriously. These people, these people is referring to like a group of others, like people on the other side who are not us. They're they're them. They're others. Um, they're taking all of these things that absolutely no nobody was offended by and feel like they have to get rid of them and destroy them because they're bored. So they over there they have, uh, they're just bored. Uh, and they're trying to destroy the fabrics of our, it should be fabric. They're trying to destroy the fabric of our society, right? So them, the others are trying to destroy our society. That's a pretty biased, um, extreme, otherizing type of characterization of people on the other side for changing mouse pants. So they cite RT, RT at Russia today, you know, um, right leaning, mostly really high variation and reliability, not the greatest source to cite. Uh, but they report, it says that much of the goal, Owen said, is to divert attention from crises facing our country, such as the highest inflation in 40 years. OK, so that's a that's a pretty big um, opinion leap. Right. It's they're drawing a conclusion about the fact that Disney changed um, you know, change the pants of uh, gave Minnie Mouse pants, um, and accusing them, the others, of using it to distract from something totally unrelated, which is the Biden administration or like crises affecting the country, right? So, this is a really big leap. And it's not very well supported by facts, right? So this is not so much an analysis as an opinion and not a very well supported opinion because a good analysis is you have facts closely tied to conclusions and inferences and statements of meaning, okay? So fact, 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 conclusion. Fact, fact, statement of meaning, right? Th that's what a good analysis looks like. Here, this is like, here's a fact, mouse pants. Here is a conclusion distracting from the real crisis that face America. Those are not closely tied together. This is an opinion. This is not, not a very good, well-supported opinion. Okay. So such as the highest inflation uh, in 40 years. Look at Minnie Mouse. The world is going forward because we've got her in a pantsuit. So she's accusing, um, she's accusing um, di the Disney company, maybe Stella McCartney indirectly of, um, not conforming to like gender roles, gender stereotypes, right? And that by itself is valid, right? Um, that like the Disney company and uh, Stella McCartney did say like, you know, it's, they called it progressive. They uh, uh, made a nod to Women's History Month. So the implication is that, yeah, there is, you know, we're trying to reflect progress, but it really has nothing to do with like, you know, trying like, it's not like them saying that there's progress due to these mouse pants uh, has anything to do with like other things that are going on in the country, right? Be and she explicitly ties uh, the, those two things together. Never mind that you can't get anything at the grocery store and you can't buy a piece of bacon unless you've got $30 in your pocket. Okay, this is completely unrelated, right? Um, she's, she's talking about challenges that face a country like, like inflation. She's, um, she's using hyperbole to describe them, right. That you can't get anything at the grocery store. Right. So it's not like all grocery stores are empty. There's some supply chain constraints, but then she's creating hyperbole around it. And you can't buy a piece of bacon unless you've got $30 in your pocket. Now that's, you know, um, that's outlandish again, let's attribute it to 
hyperbole because we know that literally bacon does not cost $30. Like a piece of bacon does not cost $30, but she's using that to say they're like, these are the problems in our country. Uh, and she's tying it explicitly to, um, you know, uh, and accusing Disney of creating like culture wars that are trying to negate that, right? At least we're addressing the real problem, which is Minnie Mouse. So um, they include a screenshot of Candace Owens uh, promoting her appearance on Jesse Waters' show on Fox. So, you know, very right leaning commentator appearing on a very right leaning show, attacking the Biden administration, um, using hyperbole and opinion argument um, to. Uh, to say that these pants are related to the economy or whatever, uh, not a very well supported argument. So, so far, where do we've got, where do we have this? Okay. We've got it in hyperpartisan, right. For, you know, comparison for language, like woke uh, Hillary Clinton, a political position, like this is a pretty hyperpartisan, right. Political position that like, yeah, the, these companies uh, shouldn't be doing, shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be changing the clothes of their fictional characters. That's like actually the pol political position that she, Candace Owens, and this article by including her comment are advocating. For reliability, um, the you know, headline is very opinionated. Uh, the expression is mostly, uh, mostly opinion, right? Um, the veracity, there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing in here that's like untrue besides like the, the piece of bacon being $30. But again, let's attribute that to hyperbole rather than like an inaccurate, you know, lie. Um, but that's a, uh, so when things are not exactly true, we score that in, in this range. So we're going to put this in this selective incomplete uh, story in this uh, problematic area for reliability. So over to the right and in the opinion section. All right. So, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a shame because there are sort there are a lot of other articles uh, like this. Um, there there are, uh, was a very similar article in an, um, in our uh, topic of the week, as you can see here, right? So we've got that that article in this area, um, this news punch article. We also have this um, uh, article in something called the Federalist Papers. Open link in new tab. All right. It's very similar. It's a federal. It's called the Federalist Papers, but you can tell this like uh, just by looking uh, looking at it. Like these um, uh, headlines here on the side about Joe Biden and should Donald Trump run for president again in twenty twenty four. I think the original writers of the Federalist Papers, uh, like uh, Alexander Hamilton and uh, and James Madison, would be sad to see that this is the name of this publication. <laughs> because it says Minnie Mouse gets woke makeover from Stella McCartney causing outrage on Twitter. And it's basically like the same kind of thing. Like, Oh, look at all these people on Twitter. Gosh, I'm so sorry. These ads are so disgusting and have so much earwax in them, but I guess it's a good sign that sites like this um, only have these kind of terrible ads on them. Um, yeah. So, you know, this is a thing like there, we could have picked a lot of other articles that are along these same lines to talk about, I mean, um, how this is just woke culture, um, progressives being too progressive and trying to change our way of life kind of complaint, right? What does this look like on the left? Because the, you know, the left is not um, blameless in this, uh, in, in this culture war, right? You can find articles like this one, Fox flips out over Minnie Mouse in pantsuit. So, well, before we were talking about like, you know, here's a story about the pants from People Magazine, pretty straightforward, mild nod towards progress. On the right, they're like, you know, they're tearing apart the fabric of society, trying to be like Hillary Clinton. What do we say about this on the left now? Okay, so left, here's a, um, a source called crooksandliars.com. Um, sounds pretty biased, it is. Um, and their focus is on, haha, look at those people on Fox on the right, just flipping out over this culture war thing. Look how silly they are, right? That's the genre of this type of article. So Fox flips out over Minnie Mouse in a pantsuit, continuing to squeeze any change a company makes into their woke cancel culture narrative. So here they use woke, woke and cancel culture. Those are two words that they do use on the right, but they're calling it here a narrative, right? Like, um, so they're, they're identifying the thing that they do on the right to attack progressives. 
Republicans are reaching for Minnie Mouse next. So notice what this is uh, referencing again. This is the same clip Candace Owens on Jesse Waters' Fox News show, right? These um, in, in the articles that we clicked through, uh, like the one on the, the right-leaning right one on uh, the Federalist Papers, they also talk about Candace Owens on this uh, Fox show. They also talk about people uh, on Twitter and, and what they say, right? But, you know, this this one appearance, um, you know, has, it makes a lot of rounds. Um, in a, the ongoing effort to prove that almost any change in America, including cartoon characters and candy coloring, uh, referring to the Mars m M&M thing, is an attack on Republicans, Fox News and other wingnut provocateurs had a fit when Minnie Mouse came out in a pantsuit. So this is a different kind of bias. This is like a um, make fun of the idiots on the other side bias. And this is a whole genre of like outrage content um, that happens on the left and on the right. And we're seeing it here uh, on the left. So calling them uh, wingnut provoca or provocateurs, you know, that's um, that's you know, same calling, right? Uh, and they saying that they had a fit so on Wednesday, Jesse Waters brought on Candace Owens. They spelled her name wrong. Again, see, this happens when you've got the outrage clickbait sites. They're just not, they're just sloppy. They're just trying to make stuff that makes you mad. They don't even care about spelling. And that makes me even matter. Who supported Trump so vehemently, she defended Hitler's white nationali nationalism to make Germany great, had a conniption fit over his uh, this latest affront to the fabric of our society. Okay, so she did say that, you know, it's an attack on the fabric of society. That's fair. However, the, um, what, did, what do they do here in, to talk about uh, Candace Owens? Um, they bring in like, you know, one of the worst things she's ever said that they could find and link to it about, um, about tr uh, defending Trump. And they say she had a conniption fit. Like that's a, a pretty stark way to characterize what she did. Like you could describe it in a, in a more neutral way. And that's a pretty uh, biased way to describe it. And then uh, they do quote Candace Owens. Uh, they quote the same thing that we saw in the actual article. This is, these are things that she did say, but why are they quoting it? Are they quoting it to say, look, Candace Owens is correct. No, they're quoting it to say, ha ha, look what Candace Owens said. And we're going to point out all the ways in which she's a dumb dumb. So that's, that's a um, different use of quotes you can see. In the right-leaning article, they quote Candace Owens to be like, see, she's correct. Like this is, this quote is true. In this article, they explicitly call the quote to say, this is what she said and it's not true. So the different reasons for using quotes. Okay, who knew Minnie Mouse wearing a red dress was baked into the fabric of American society? So it's tongue in cheek, um, you know, sarcastic here. Um, then Owens claimed that the changes to green M&Ms and Minnie Mouse is an effort by companies to deflect inflation problems from Biden. That's true. She did claim that, right? Uh, are there deep state corporations now? So they're making fun of the uh, of the right uh, that talks attacks, you know, that deep state as a boogeyman, as they do like the woke and cancel culture, et cetera. So uh, then they say, if Republican TV news didn't scream about their faux idiotic grievances to promote their cancel culture meme, their viewers wouldn't be fo their viewers wouldn't be focusing on them, right? So you know, it's just a lot of generalizations, opinion statements, um, saying that like Republican news isn't really news. Um, they're screaming. Um, they uh, have idiotic grievances that are fake, uh, and they're doing it to to drive um, their, to drive. Uh, viewers, right? So again, these are opinion statements. Um, you know, is it a, uh, are they supported by facts? Sure, they could find facts to support those conclusions, but they're just kind of throwing out the opinion statement um, as is. Uh, so we call that opinion rather than analysis. All right. Even today, Fox uh, News tried to make light of the Minnie Mouse kerfuffle and link the new pantsuit to Hillary Clinton, all right? Um, so yeah, the, uh, Bill Hemmer asked, who else wears pantsuit? Dana Prina says she does too. You mean Hillary? Yes, she loves her pantsuits, right? Uh, so uh, usually, um, you know, they're talking about, and it's like you know, a lot of dimensions going on. This outlet is talking about Fox News making fun of Hillary Clinton and her pantsuits um, because that's a thing that they do on the right, which is true. Uh, and But what what the left likes to do is make fun of like the worst things that they say over on the right, you know? And this is a, this is a pattern we see. 
sometimes on the right, they'll make fun of the worst things that um, they say on the left. And it just turns into this like war of um, saying, ha ha, look how wrong and bad the people are uh, on the other side are. And again, about what? About freaking mouse pants. So, you know, if you, if your Twitter feed or your Facebook feed was full of just the right-wing articles, about Minnie Mouse or just the left wing articles about Minnie Mouse. If you're on the right, you'd be like, oh, the left is trying to destroy the fabric of society and distract from the Biden administration because of all the changing of the, the fictional characters clothes. And on the left, uh, you'd say all the right cares about is uh, is attacking these things that don't even matter and uh, having hissy fits and conniption fits and faux outrage. And, you know, if you if that's your whole viewpoint, if that's like your whole Twitter feed, if that is your whole um, outlook on um, how the other side is, um, you know, that really impacts your worldview. Imagine if all you read was like many miles of wearing pantsuits. And that's all you've read about it. You probably even wouldn't read past the headline of the article. You'd just be like, oh, okay, whatever. Do I, how much do I really care about this? Um, and then you wouldn't have it turn into uh, something that makes you angry, something that makes you hate your relatives, uh, you know, something that makes you not you know, see eye to eye with your neighbors. And so I think it's a real shame that um, this genre of articles exists. You know, a company does a thing to be mildly progressive, uh, right and left immediately turn it into like, this is why the other side is terrible and we should never get along with them. All right. Uh, just to close this out, the rating on this one, this crooks and liars is over here in this uh, selective or incomplete story, unfair persuasion, propaganda, hyper-partisan left. So, you know, quite similar over here to these like uh, news punch are in Federalist Papers articles. All right. So that's, uh, that's the story on the mouse pants. Uh, we'll be back next week with a new topic. Uh, check our topics of the week for uh, starter, uh, our starter topics and our advanced topics that's here on our site. You can find them right here. And we've got uh, those rated for two different topics every single week. I'll see you next time.